Hi, I'm Brett. Today we've got a video update on a walk around on the Subaru LaVorg. So we, here we are in uh, September 2016. Car's been on sale for a couple of months. First time it's been sold in Australia. Effectively, the WRX 2 litre DIT engine in the wagon form, which typically, from what I know, has only ever been sold in the past in Japan and Australia. We're lucky to get it. However, you can only get it with a CVT automatic transmission at the moment and we do hope that Subaru may change their mind and convince the factory to produce it with a six-speed transmission, but that's another topic. So what we're going to do in the next five minutes is a separate video on the performance upgrades of this particular car, but let's just talk about the car itself and then I've got another video coming on a road test. So one of the things you'll notice with the wagon version of the LeVorg is it only comes with a single outlet twin rear mufflers. Um, there's, a, there's three different levels of car that you can get with different levels of performance. Um, a lot of them have, um, one of the ones is you can get it with and without the Bilstein shock absorbers. Some have got some roofs. Um, but typically overall what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the key aspects of this particular model and what makes it a little bit unique in the Subaru range. Because remember, the uh, performance Subaru Liberty wagon is no longer available now. And this particular model car is probably what Subaru hopes is going to fill a gap in the market. One of the particular things that makes this different to the WRX is it's got electric rear handbrake. So it doesn't have a handbrake inside, a manual handbrake inside. So you'll see this mechanism here is a servo assisted mechanical parking brake. But we have done the dimension, it's a massive rear rotor. This is a 300 mil rear rotor, which is by far from what we know in the Subaru WRX range, the biggest rear rotor on the cars ever. And if you come around the front, just hold that uh, picture in your mind, you'll see the front rotors um, are the same as WRX, which I think uh, they're 306, if I remember right. Yep, yeah, um, a little bit bigger than that. Um, twin piston sliding calipers on the front, um, because previous years they've moved away, which is the Takiko caliper. And of course, you can see on the front here, it's got the Bilstein shock absorbers as well. Um, from, a, from the rest of the layout point of view, the suspension is very, very similar to WRX although there are some small changes here and there which you would come to expect with a wagon type of body but let's just talk about the engine configuration again like the wx got twin scroll turbo up inside here and i've taken some still photos so you can have a look at the bottom of this video um, to see what it's like the two liter direct injection engine this model now from 2013 onwards which first came out in australia in the subaru forester xt has got the turbo underneath now built into the exhaust manifold Fantastic turbo, comes on boost very, very early. Um, check out our other video on how you can make it go a little bit better. And the car comes factory standard with electric power steer. Um, and we are talking earlier on, you can only get this model in the CVT Trans. So up inside here, I'll get my camera to come around the side. It's a, little, it's a huge transmission. Um, so the drive shaft come out of the front diff, but inside this part here is the CVT transmission, which is a constantly variable transmission. There are gears inside there, but not gears as you would expect of the old fashioned auto transmission or a manual transmission. The design of this transmission is to hold it at peak torque around three to 4,000 RPM to get the best performance out of the engine. And it will accelerate like a manual transmission. And you can actually put it into manual mode where it will mimic an eight speed transmission, but it doesn't have eight gears inside there. It actually makes you think there's eight gears. So that's the upside. The downside is the transmission does limit how much torque you can generate if you want to modify this car. Um, and there's another video update on that. I encourage you to have a look at if you're deciding to modify your Subaru, which from our point of view, we pride ourselves in giving factory warranty guarantee with our lot of modifications. And of course, the transmission is one of the things that has the biggest effect on, that, on the auto transmission, WRX, Forester, and now the LaVorg. So, from the turbo point of view, we're talking about it comes out here, high flow, I mean, factory catalytic converter, the exhaust system down around underneath the, the engine K-frame here, and then all the way out and around the back into a wide joint into the twin rear mufflers. So let's just have a look at the inside of the suspension from here. You can see um, Subaru no longer in their models have uh, McPherson or Chapman strut rear suspension. They've got the multi-link rear end with the upper wishbone the lower longitudinal arm and the uh, lateral arm here to locate the suspension and the shock absorber in the spring actually has no guiding function meaning you can take the shock absorber and the spring out of the car and the suspension will be still located by the suspension components that's the big difference between a McPherson strut front end 
or what some people call McPherson strut rear end, but it's actually a Chapman strut, where the shock absorber has an effect of guiding function and locating the suspension. So typically on the rear of these cars, um, the shock absorber and the spring is separate. And this is quite a common suspension layout now of all the Subaru models because it increases cabin space. And of course, you've got the rear sway bar that comes across the back, which is such a so common performance upgrade if you want to make the car handle a little bit better. So the sway bar goes right across the back and links both sides of the cars because it's a torsion arm and as the car rolls one way, it transfer, transfers the body roll to the other to try and flatten the car out. And depending on the size of the rear bar, it changes the way the car handles. Now, with these days, one of the things you may be asking about, well, what can I do to make the car better? We'll talk about that in one of our other video updates, but let's just touch on suspension because depending on what you want to do with this car, you may just decide you want to do a sports handling kit, which is quite a common upgrade. You do a front and rear sway bar supplied and fitted as a package, or you may decide you want to make the car sit a little bit lower and change the shock absorbers. Maybe you bought the Levorg model that doesn't have the Bilsteins in, you want to replace the uh, rear shock absorbers and springs and the front shocks and springs, maybe with some MCA shocks or teens or something like that to give the ability to change the ride height and the shock absorber, um, um, shock absorber rate, not the spring rate. And those are some of the features and benefits you can get these days with aftermarket shock absorber. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that by changing the rear mufflers you're going to get some miracle increase in performance because the rear mufflers on the Levorg and the WRX are quite a good muffler and if you do change them it makes this horrible ringy um, uh, note on cold start which a lot of people don't like and if you've got someone that's trying to sell your complete exhaust system with rear mufflers you have to ask yourself what type of R&D have they done because our testing tells us the rear mufflers on the WRX and the Levorg and the Forester range of cars is only worth about two or three kilowatts. So why would you spend, I don't know, $500,000 replacing the rear mufflers for a performance improvement for two or three kilowatts? But you may change them because you just want to make it look better because the WRX has twin rear outlets of which um, we've tested. They won't fit in the back here because obviously you need a wider gap for the rear bumper bar to fit the twin outlets, but we're pretty sure they would mechanically bolt up if you had a different trim on the back of the car. So if you're looking for other ways to improve or just you want to make your Levorg sound a bit better, um, yes, you can change the mufflers, but choose very, very carefully. But remember, the more you change of the exhaust system, the more it may affect your Subaru factory warranty. The more you change of the exhaust towards the front, the less restriction, the car will then come on boost differently and then you've got to do uh, custom tuning of the factory ECU and then that has a knock-on effect of which you need to be more careful in the consideration of how you have a reliable performance tune, whether you keep or get your Subaru factory warranty. From our point of view, with our performance upgrades, all our XP kits, we guarantee you will keep your Subaru factory warranty, but you may need to be aware of that and just choose your uh, supplier carefully because a lot of people don't realise when you change your exhaust system, they might say, look, I'll just change your rear muffler, it won't affect my Subaru warranty. Well, Subaru has the right to deny your warranty if they think it affects the warranty claim that you're making. So the rest of the car you'll notice now has a lot more plastic underneath it now from an aerodynamic point of view, which improves um, uh, fuel economy. Um, I'm not really too sure what some of these slots are. I think some of the models you can get some different opportunities with changing some of the underbody protection and also the aerodynamic parts there. Interestingly, the under tray stops, stops here, but on some of the STI models, there's actually an under tray here now. Um, but that's really about it. From the front suspension, let's just touch on that topic alone. WRX and Levorg now come with an aluminium front arm. Um, it's got a uh, Heim joint in here. The earlier model Subarus had a rubber joint in here, which were notorious for tearing over a period of time because that twists and bends as the suspension goes up and down. Whiteline do a fantastic replacement joint for that, but with the newer change in this particular model with the with the uh, ball joint encapsulated rubber here, it's a little bit more reliable. Um, and that's the part which they call the anti-lift kit. Front sway bar is a replacement part available from Whiteline. And that, again, coupled with the rear sway bar will give you an improvement in handling depending on what your long-term objective is. And of course, then you've got all the other components which you can see. And um, I'll touch on that topic now. If you go to the MRT Performance website, you can put in Levorg and you'll see all the parts that we offer in the search menu and it'll give you a choice of choosing um, parts in our um, online cart or technical documents on our website or power kit information and things like that. So there you have it, the Subaru Levorg Australian delivered model. 
I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about your car. I think um, it'll take a while for the market to get used to it. I, I really enjoy driving myself. I'm going to do a road test on this car. I've been driving it for a couple of days now. But depending on your needs, it probably will fit a market gap that Subaru have got. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Send us a uh, comment on the bottom of this video. Follow us on Facebook. You'll find some more helpful information there. But for today, no matter where you are in the world, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.